Welcome to Top 5 Guns, everyone. It's a series that we do where we talk with some of your favorite people from the shooting community about the five guns they would take from their actual collection if they could only take five guns to last for the rest of their life. Now, those guns will be ranked in order, and along the way, we ask them some questions. We get to know them a little bit. Now, some of you may be familiar with today's guest, but he's also a little bit in the category of if you know, you know. He doesn't rely on being a, a loud personality in the community to fill up his training classes at Lead Fawcett Tactical. He relies on his reputation and real world experience. Dan Broco spent almost 27 years in the military with 21 of those being in the Army Special Forces about 18 to 19 of those were as an assaulter. He went on to be the NCO in charge of Range 37 on Fort Bragg, which has been described as the Olympics for gunfighters, which is about the coolest thing in the world. So to say that Dan knows a thing or two about gear and training and shooting, that would be an understatement. So with that said, let's get on with the show. Okay, for pistols today, I'm running Nighthawk BDS-9. I'm running the uh, Springfield Echelon. All right, so we're shooting around the world. Everybody, hey, it's only at three meters, but we're shooting a three inch dot. From position three, pro timer goes off. You can shoot the dots in any order. Two rounds per dot. You can reload where you want, all for time. Any shot outside the three inch dot is a second added onto your time. It's called around the world. 14 and under Learjet, 1401 to 18, C-130, above 18, hot air balloon. Let's see what we got. Ooh, I like the classifications. <laughs> from holster? Nope, from three. Yep. So the, bl the black is yeah, not the yep. square, the black. The whole black. Yeah, got it. So you're ready. Yep. Good run, 1387. Two misses. Two. Yeah, because you didn't fall through after the reload. That's a good run, 1587, bro, for the first time running the drill, no shit. Yep. Hey, and this this drill is all trigger manipulation. I could strip sights off, but if I'm low left, low right, high, it's all on the trigger. That's Can you run. do makeup shots? No. Okay, got it. No makeups. Okay, what was the time again? 1387 raw plus two, 1587. 1587, okay, cool. All right, yep, from three. Shooter ready. Yep. Good. Nice run. Good. 1304 clean. Nice run. Very nice Put run. Put one pasty on this thing. Shooter ready. Shooter ready. Stand by. Eleven ninety six with one, two, three misses. So we are at fourteen ninety six. That's around the world. Chris, watch this. Whoa! You know what that is? Some mobility there. That's an up kick. If I had a belt that didn't move with me, I wouldn't be able to. You'd be restrained a little bit. Right. Okay. Also, I mean that's not bad, right? I'm, I'm actually impressed. I'm I not just that. saying that for the video. That's impressive. I held that. I've been stretching lately, everyone. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't really need to because my belt is so flexible. Damn it, that's such a good, <laughs> I feel bad for complimenting, but such a good segue. I don't really need to stretch that much because my belt moves with me. Yeah. Um, we use the Segarra Light Inner Velcro belt. That's both of our uh, EDC belts. Yep. Um, there's other belts that they have. The emissary belt's a little bit more rigid if you want something that, you know, if you're gonna be like racking sights off your belts because that's what you do with your life, um, you know, emissary is a little bit better for that. 
um, and battle wagon. Yeah, if you wanted a battle belt for going to the range or I guess in battle, the inner light belt that I EDC every day has the Velcro side that then my battle belt or battle wagon from Segera layers on top of. Our code 1911 syndicate saves you about 10% off. Great belts, guys. Check them out. And, and on to gun number five. All right, Mr. Dan, tell us about gun number freaking five. Gun, gun five in my top five of my collection is, you can see it's a uh, pair of Ornance 2011, yeah. 1911 style gun. Yeah. Um, why did I chose that one? I just, you know, my dad was in the Marine Corps and he was a, he was a marksman instructor in the Marine Corps. And okay. you think he'd start off with 22s and pellet guns. Well, we started me and my brothers off with the 1911. Oh yeah, cool. I like them already. So it was like, yeah, all right, hey, I'm gonna teach you the proper grip and stance. And if you can't hold this, you can't shoot any gun out there, so to speak. Um, so I've always been a fan of 1911 style. And this one in particular, you see the engravings on it, it was, one, yeah. of the two, one of the two things for my retirement gift um, when I left the military. Oh, no so, way. Yeah, I retired out of being the Sergeant Major Range 37, and they have my call sign and um, our, our unit symbol and uh, Range 37 on that thing. That's so, awesome. And that is very cool. It got through, I think the Special Forces Charitable Trust landed those. Perry doesn't even make that anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so um, one of the guys landed it to me and gave it to me. So I don't shoot it that much. I got another 1911 that I, I roll with, but it's just kind of a, I always have that gun. Yeah. I always yeah. have that gun. So oh. it's 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 a cool piece of one. It reminds me of growing up and, and with the my history. dad and then it, it's i look at it and be like man that's that's my 27 years of military service right there and i think they nailed the gun for me cool 100 really percent. and that's, a, that's what's a cool thing with this top five thing is it doesn't always have to be like uh you know the gun should be apocalypse hits the fan, you yeah, know yeah, the, yeah, it yeah. can be that and a gun that you shoot or don't shoot but sentimental is important right yep. so a lot of us gun owners have sentimental pieces and so very cool piece man with a great story yeah and the guys uh the engineers where I work from made this nice solid oak little stand, um, you know, a pistol stand for yeah. it. And that, that's where it sits. Yeah, yeah. In, in my, uh, I call it my team room, you know, my, my, my love me, my love me shack um, mm -hmm. with all my military stuff. And it always sits out if we're home, then it goes in the safe, but it's just sitting out there. Well, cool. it, it's amazing how, I mean, cause that's like OG double stack. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah 1911, yeah. you there know? Ain't, there ain't no light rail. There ain't no, no. optic cut out on it. That's, that, that's yeah. like when they first came out, let's try to experiment with one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and it's, it's like, it, it is cool to see how far that platform's come oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like, man, that's, you know, in many ways basis for shit. What are now like the most tricked out, tuned out pistols oh, yeah. in the world, yep. you know? Yep. Damn, very cool to see. Okay, with that said, maybe now we'll actually kind of backtrack and go through like, hey, intro background, you know, like, okay. who are you? Hey, fellas, that's my catchphrase on all my videos. But, I've, uh, I've I, noticed. I, I, I appreciate you guys I've having noticed. me on. The first time oh, I, no. I met you Dude. guys, it was it was. Thank it was, you for I coming met on. You before, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was yeah, great. No, I really absolutely. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I know you guys work with Type A a lot. Um, so, I spent. Uh, name's Dan Brokus. My company is Lead Fawcett Tactical. I spent 27 years in the military, 21 um, in the Army SF community, and really wasn't sure what I was going to do to retired. And I, I tell you. Uh, I just got helped out by a lot of people in the industry um, and, and decided to do my own thing. And this is our sixth year in business. And I travel around and do carbine pistol, um, some shotgun and some tactic works. Nice. CQB awesome. tactics on, on that realm. Um, that's about it in whatever custom customization you want as far as shooting and training mm -hmm. going on. And um, we've grown. Um, my wife pretty much runs the company. We, we have about five employees. Nice. Um, two of them are sure. other instructors that 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 help me out, and and the rest is the admin side of the house. But we're staying small. So yeah. where so where does Lead Fawcett come from? Um, I always get and that, I know I've set I, you I always, up for I this. I always get that question. So it comes from a couple of different things. So I was I started out in the eighty second Airborne, mm -hmm. um, and we jumped in on a training exercise, and I was the AG because I was a private and I was a big guy. Hey, hump this AG gear, which is heavy. You had the heaviest rucksack and a thousand thousand rounds of m60 ammo and 
the 60 gunner broke his leg on the drop zone. So my squad leader, weapon squad leader said, Brokos, pick that 60 gunner up. And I said, and the AG gear? And he's like, don't be a smart ass, just pick it up. So we're doing this live fire assault. And man, I'm just out of basic training. Five to seven round burst. And back then there's no foamies or peltors. And he's just <laughs> knife handed me. And I'm like, and he lays right next, kicks, punches me in the ribs, lays right next to me. I got your attention. He's like, yeah. He's like, quit fucking around with that machine gun. I don't care what you hit. It's how it sounds that's going to pass this e for force. You're ripping off three to five round strings. Turn on the lead faucet, rip all like 20, 30, and goes watch. And he just started mowing this thing down with 30 round strings. I said, oh, I got this lead faucet thing. And I... I was doing 100-round strings. Melt, <laughs> melted the barrel because you don't have any AG to, to yeah, do it. Yeah, so yeah. I had to low crawl off the drop zone with a melted M60 barrel. Oh, that that shit. was my punishment, but I never forgot that. And along in the lines growing up in the military when I, when I became an E8 team sergeant and then a company sergeant major in the tactical things, it was sort of in a brevity code that I would use um, to, to hire mostly, mostly support aircraft um, on the GOS. It would be a, a brevity code, hey, is... Uh, Golf four needs the lead faucet, and that's sort of where it's stored into. Um, huh. And the the guys that work with me know what it means, but I get this question all the time, so kind of stuck with me. Um, and I didn't plan on doing anything on my own, but I started thinking about it. I'm like, man, I'm gonna call it lead faucet. You know, it's like it's it's kind Sun of military thing. Hey, dude, yeah. and it kind of was. I would be, hey, quit fucking around and turn on the lead faucet. That means shoot faster. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. accuracy always wins, so it's a catchphrase, fellas. It's not spray and pray, but it it is. You got to open up the lead faucet every now and then. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. it comes down. Yeah. to. I love it. After hearing that too, it sounds like you're kind of a sentimental guy from the pair ordinance to the lead faucet moniker. Yeah, I, I try to do it. It's like yeah. I, I don't I don't know. It doesn't matter what job you have. If you do something for 27 years and leave it, there's there's a learning curve in your life where it's like, and I'll be honest, it, it, I am sentimental about it, but you have to move on. Yeah, You, you do, yeah. but you can't forget it. Yeah, Because I used to thought when I first retired, the first year was like a thousand pound rucksack came off my back. Second year was tough. Yeah, It's like, man, that was my whole identity. Mm -hmm. But I got a great wife and family like, no, that's not your identity. You just, that was a job. But mm -hmm. in the end, it's, it's used to. So I've moved on, but I always remember it. Yeah. And, you know, the company name remembers it. Yep. That pistol remembers it. So I, I kind of think you're right. It's I awesome. Am. But you yeah. got to move on at some point. Sure. Well, and I think it'll affect anybody. Yeah. All right. With that said, we are going to gun number four. All right, gun number four, going shotgun route. Okay. I'm, I'm going shotgun. Okay. This this goes back to uh, again nostalgia. It's in a good way though. It's like you're paying way. homage yeah, to that. Yeah. So I, I do reference this as uh, when my dad passed, he gave me a Benelli M4. Yeah. Not just that one, but we we divvied up his guns and. Um, Besides the 1911, I, I, I took the Benelli M4 that he had and, and always liked shooting shotguns. But this past year, I've really picked up the amount of tactical shotgun classes I'm, I'm teaching. And, uh, you know, by far, just working through all the shotguns, I shoot a Beretta 1301 comp and, and three gun. And then this 1301 tactical is just, they're fast. Yeah. They're accurate. I. I don't think I've cleaned this thing, and it's probably got 2,000, 3,000 rounds through it. I clean every now and then, but just how they're built and all that, it's not just a, 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 a teaching tool, but you know what? My wife and kids can't miss with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. it, they're, they're great home defense. I, I, I really believe that, and that thing sits in the corner of my bed. Not that one. That one travels with me, but the one just like that sits in the corner of my bedroom. And so, I, and that one's uh, been tuned up by, by yes, Langdon? Yes, that is. That, that, most of my teaching shotguns are uh, Ernest Langdon, um, tunes those up. And yeah. everybody he's knows who he is. That He's the man on, on, yeah. on Beretta pistols and Beretta shotguns. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a huge difference between shooting that and the buttstock, the trigger work, uh, the, the mount for the SRO and optics all mm -hmm. comes from Ernest. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I mean, ironically, on the same trip, we were with Ernest yep. uh, a night ago shooting shotguns. And yep. um, yeah, no, I mean, he's he's definitely, you know, shotgun guru for, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, you might. I'm trying to go from memory. Um, Dan might be the first guest that's picked a shotgun. He is the first guest to pick a shotgun. Which is shocking. I think yeah. this is maybe episode like six of this we've done. I don't think yeah. anyone's ever picked a shotgun. Uh -uh. And uh, people always chime in, in the comments. They're like, no shotgun, bro. And we're like, I don't, we don't pick we the guns. Pick it. like, yeah. It's on our list. You got to admit, though, it's... I. Man, crushing a plate rack with birdshot and just shooting, you know, I, I know birdshot's not a, a tactical choice. I mean, you can crush a plate rack back at 20, 25 with tactical ammo. It's just, it's just fun. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it teaches you how to shoot. I mean, th those are fast shotguns, but really you want to manage a good stance, man, learn how to shoot a shotgun. It pays off with a carbine in, yeah. in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. They're, they're really good training tools for mm -hmm. to manage the mechanics. Now, if your sh stance is shitty and you can't shoot that, you're, you're probably not going to be able to shoot a carbine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, very cool. Guys, if you're ever looking to support the channel. Ch channer. Channer. <laughs> <laughs> guys, if you're ever looking. <laughs> it's melting down like a cheap suit. All right, guys, if you're ever looking to support the channel, a couple different ways. One, we are a real estate company. I know if you haven't heard that, it's a little bit of a shocker. What are we doing shooting guns, selling real estate? Well, that's exactly what we're doing, shooting guns, selling real estate. Jake is licensed in Salt Lake, Utah. I am down here in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have affiliates located all over the country. So if you need help with real estate, want to support the channel, we're your guys. We've also got the uh, Patreon, and that would be behind the scenes content. You get uh, some special giveaways. We do Q and A's every month. We might even start doing some lives. We did it once, might start playing around with that. Um, you know, drink some whiskey together on a, li on a live, why not? Yeah. Or at least I'll, I'll drink. Everyone else can just ask questions Watch or you something. drink. Yeah, sure. Like the alcoholic in the group that she <laughs> sure, is. Sure, whatever. <laughs> um, so anyway, you can check that out. We've got a link below. One last very, very quick thank you here. Um, big thanks to the folks at um, Recoil for um, really helping out our channel today because our filming day took a little bit of a detour and um yeah we we're, we're we are located right now is is with the uh help of the folks at recoil so hey stand up dudes appreciate yeah that. seriously thanks for stepping up to the plate really going above and beyond for us and uh let's get back to the range this this one's kind of confusing it's three two three again it's it's at five meters with the carving so pro timer goes off three to my eight inch circle, two to my top left four, three eight inch, two head, three eight inch, two right. Make sense? Two, three, two, three, two. Nope, three, three. two. Three, two, three, two, three. Yep, okay. Just like this. Three, two, three, two, three, two. Time okay. stop, same time. Anything, here's this one. You gotta hold the circles else it's a zero. And we'll get two runs on this since it's quick and it's a carbine. Shooter's ready. Good run, seven, six, seven, all in. Shooter ready. Yep. Through, through one, yep. through two. Oh, oh no, that one's breaking the line. Uh, one, line I don't count line breaks. Ah, dude, that's fucking, le that's legit. That's how you score it. One out, 505, but zero. Shooter's ready. Stand by. Total time, four, six, nine with zero misses. God, I'm so slow. All right, let's get one more run in on this. Three, two, three, shooter ready. There you go. Six even, six even, all in. Okay, you're ready. Yep. Dropped another one. Yep, 485 minus three. Shooter ready? She's ready. Stand by. Clean run, four, five, four. Ooh, cooking. All right, that said, we are going to gun number three. Gun number three, what do we got? Gun number three is SIG 365 on an Icarus frame with a Parker Mountain machine comp. Um, That's a tricked out 365 tricked right out there. It is, of course, with the little uh, whatever 
Is it Holocent? I didn't even see what it no, was. No, it's, it's uh, Trigicon RMRCC. Oh, yeah. Um, with, yeah, yeah. With the Streamlight um, little micro light on that thing. i tell you why that is number three on my list, because that goes everywhere with me. That's probably the first small concealed carry gun, the way Icarus built that lower, that I'm confident that I could use that thing almost like a full-size pistol. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the, I mean, the Parker Mountain Machine has no recoil. It's a 9 mil. It's like shooting a 22. Yeah. And again, that I got that from Ian Harrison from Recoil. It was about two years ago. I was I was down at his house. I flew in from somewhere else, and we're, we're working an event. And he goes, Dan, you got a, a gun? I'm like, no. I said, I just flew in carbines. He's like, take this. And it was a, a 365 on an Icarus. Hmm. I'm like, dude, where did you get this? He's like, you never heard of Icarus? I said, no, man. I you know, don't go on the internet. I'm not, I love guns, but I just, not on the internet as much as I used to. I said, I've never heard of them. And I hopped online and it was like May 2nd and they just released their lowers May 1st and they're all gone. Hmm all gone. I Which just, usually tells you something. I love the way that gun shot. And he's like, man, take some ammo and, and blast away with this because we were working a range event. And I'm like, dude, I got to get one of these things. So I hopped online and I'm like, dude, they're out of stock. And he didn't say a word to me. And then uh, I got home like three days later and I apologize for getting his name, but the owner of Icarus says, hey, you're good friends with Ian. Check your mailbox. <laughs> I'm like, hey, sir, you don't have to do that. And yeah, he's yeah. like, no, 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 no. Ian said you love the gun. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, cool and, move. I've had it ever since, and it's a great gun for concealed carry. Yeah, well, and, and, and it's and, easy and, to shoot for um, my wife and kids. It's got a comp on it. Sure, um, it's small, it's concealable, but you can get a full size grip on it. You know, I always like when I first start off with my kids and wife. It's like, hey, well, they want these itty bitty guns. No, no, you you got to you got to shoot something that you can defend. Nothing wrong with itty bitty guns, but learn off something com not a sub comeback something compact that's just my model and that fits it perfectly yeah well and i mean you're not a small dude no. so so i i would naturally i would think that could just too small for you but i i, I mean par apparently not obviously you, no, you, you love it and you carry the hell the, out of it the way they icarus built that back strap i mean it's you can shoot it easily with big hands yeah. easily yeah, yeah it's it's by far and, and one it's that thing goes everywhere with me it's everyday carry yeah. And aesthetically, it's a great looking gun. Great. It is. Right? It is. I mean, yep. with the light, the, the color scheme, all of it, it's a very aesthetically pleasing gun. Yeah, I it carried just a 365. Awesome. Yeah, I carried a 365 XL for, for years before I realized I was part of the 1911 syndicate and didn't carry a 1911, and I felt like a stupid traitor. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, yeah, you're, it's your company. You should probably start carrying a 1911. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right? I, felt, I felt a little bad I get about that. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, very cool carry gun. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan of that. All right, back on with um, some thrilling questions here. So I purposely don't tell you what these these things are. So right. um, what do you do well? Not shooting, like what does Dan Brokos do well in life? What do I do well in life? I, I Dude, I'm, I'm digging this question. I, I, I think I work hard well at keeping the, the family intact in my farm, to be honest. It's like... I just, I'm retired, but if I slow down, I slow down. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm all for Netflix and movie every now and then. Um, but me and my wife, um, retired and we bought 20 acres in Southern Virginia cause I wanted to live in the middle of nowhere. I wanted no neighbors mm -hmm. and nobody was keen on it except for me. Yeah, yeah. And so they suffered out there being 48 minutes away from hair and nails and all Holy that. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. So, you're out there. Uh, I decided I'm like, there's no downtime for Dan um, as far as, and now I'm not saying my wife has helped me out a lot, but um, we've remodeled the place, made it good. Um, I'm always doing upkeep. And I, th I kind of think I bit off more than I can chew. <laughs> it's uh -huh. like the upkeep uh -huh. on, on that place is, is good. So I, I'll be honest, I, I think I work hard well. Yeah. At any task. Yeah. Well, you know, and background, I'm sure it comes into play on that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah in a profession where you worked hard so yeah i almost said i fuck a lot of shit up very well but yeah <laughs> that that is probably second yeah <laughs> well hey we'll, we'll throw that in the number two spot okay so the inverse of it what do you suck at i i think i honestly suck at being not being unselfish at times i, I really do uh-huh um, because sure. i say that I get where you're like, going 
I love my job and people call up and they're like, Hey, we want to do work and all this. Um, man, I, I, I think I pretty much suck at being unselfish with the family at aspects. I'll, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a truthful question. Do, do I love them? Do I spend time? Do we have a great family? We do. But I think I need to work less and spend more time with the family at some time and point. Sure. Yeah, no, but it's fair, you know, yeah. and it's like, it's, fun having these conversations because it's like you know gun industry is like classic you know tough guy Hoorah! you know thing and it's like yeah. sometimes like hey you know everyone's human at the end of the day and it's kind of kind of fun yeah. getting the peek behind the curtain okay so i always like asking people this if you if you could do any career other than what you do now what do you think you'd do i i i think i'd be a firefighter oh yeah 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 i really do I, it's something that i was always interested in the the med aspect growing up um even you know when i when i tried out for sf i wanted to be an 18 delta medic really and, oh yeah mm. and they're like mm, no you, you're 11 bravo, bravo. and you're, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna fuck with guns yeah. i said all right um but i've i've got a lot of buddies that um have gotten out and become fire firefighters and it's nothing's about money for me, but just the, the, the aspect of what they do, any, any type of giving back to the community is what keens on me. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I have a buddy that works in Fort Collins and he's two on four off and loves his schedule. That's a great schedule. Yeah. Great schedule. They, they great have schedule. great, they have great schedules. Now, granted it, it depends on where you work, but it's just always interests me. They, 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 they gotta be in shape. They serve the community. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not an easy job. Yeah. 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 And you still get the team aspect like your previous yes. career. You get yep. the camaraderie, you get the boys, you get the yeah. guy time. And and that's mostly probably what is kind of bad about really my career appealing. now. I'm kind of an individual, but your firefighter career, I've got some people that got out and know it. And it's still, you still have colleagues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You still have colleagues to work with and rely on. Yeah. Um, so that's probably what I'd be doing. Yeah, no doubt. Well, and most of the time, much like your previous career, everyone... There's guys that don't put out, but most everyone puts out yeah. on a fire, you know, fire unit or whatever they call them, squad. I don't know. Fire platoon? Engine crew? I don't or, know. Engine. Yeah, yeah I, fire I, engine. I, I, there I, you go. I have no clue. Most yeah. everyone has to put out there like, hey, pick up the slack or like do your job because you're not cutting it. And there's yeah. another appealing thing about that, especially with your background, I'm sure. Yeah. So. Awesome, okay. man. I, that was out of left field. I would have never thought. No, so that's no, cool. I dig it. All right. That said, we're going to gun number two. Right, gun number two, what do we got? It is a Type A EG17, which custom Glock. Um, it's number two because Glock and carbine are, are most of my work tools. Sure. Um, and then I, I grew up in the military shooting a Glock 17 my an, entire career. So I'm very comfortable with that gun. And that's also got some sentimental value to me too. I think it was probably two years ago or maybe even, yeah, two years ago at SHOT Show, another instructor in my line of work, two other ones have uh, a company that builds them custom guns. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of poking at me and shit like this. And uh, Brandon and Chris from Type A were there. And uh, I'm like, dude, dude, I'll shoot you with my stock Glock, your $5,000 custom gun, you know, mm -hmm. and all this. And uh, I, they didn't say a word. And then the next day I seen them, um, I, I met them at the, the Victos booth and they're like, dude, we're making you a gun. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, what, what do you want on a carbine? What do you want for a pistol? And this is, he's like, we're sort of thinking this. I said, well, man, I, I shoot a Glock 17. He's like, we're going to make you one. I'm not, I'm not nobody's going to shit talk dudes that work with us. Yeah. I'm like, right, dude, you guys make don't it have out to, of spite. they take it. Yeah. They made, they kind of made it out of spite. And I'll tell you what, I think drives tax. Yeah. Awesome. Very impressed with that gun. Like, you know, it's drives tax and yeah. there's, there's, there is things special about it. It's made in house. Um, it's polished. It's it's smooth as shit. You know, Glocks take five thousand rounds to break in. That took zero rounds to break in. So Type A did a great job on that gun. And yeah, and don't it, misconstrue that. We're aware that a Glock works out of the box. Everyone, we yeah, understand. Yeah, you mean yeah, smooth yeah. out and just yeah, kind of yeah, the yeah, burgers yeah, get yeah. rounded You're off. You're right. Sometimes, yes. yeah, it, it's someone's just, gonna lose their mind. You, literal you, interpretation. I'll, I'll be honest. My trigger and everything else on a Glock is it works out of the box, but after a couple thousand rounds, you're like that thing. It really smooths out. They, they've already done the polishing for you. You don't have to put a thousand rounds through it. It's just 
It's it's a yeah, great yeah, gun, yeah. and it, it, I work with it every year. Yeah. Well, and hey, you could still carry that if you had to. Yep. You know, if it came down to it, you you could certainly pull that off as a carry gun. You do pretty much anything for that matter. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good pick. Good pick. Okay, so now we move on to what we call the lightning round. The, oh, no, not gun, not gun. Not one? gun. No, no. Not the lightning round. round. All right, all right. Lightning round gets gets a little, you know. So, so <laughs> handful of questions. Number one, what's your favorite drink? Jameson. Oh, okay. Irish whiskey. Yep. Neat or on the rocks or neat. Neat. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> we can roll with that, man. Yeah. You're in good company here on that one. Okay. Cool. Now this one you're gonna have to think pretty hard about. A fist fight breaks out between you and I. How long do you think that fight lasts? Four seconds. Uh, Four I'm, seconds? Over or under? No. I got a bad hip nowadays and all this okay. stuff. I'm, That's good I'm, for I'm, me. I'm, I'm going to say at least 30 seconds. Okay, 30 <laughs> seconds. I might make it 30 seconds. Because he has a handicap. Because <laughs> he's beaten and broken. Best case scenario, I last 30 seconds. The only thing I might have going is... Speed to evade the situation. That might be the best thing I have going for me. Dan's being so nice to you right now, bro. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I'm 50. I can't fight anymore. Uh, uh, That's yeah, why uh, I walk around with a Malinois who's yeah, not here. There you yeah, go. he'll take care of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so then we we play this game. So let's say you're on uh, death row. We've caught you for whatever the hell it is that you've done. And um, But before we put you down, you get your death row meal. Now this consists of appetizer, entree, and dessert. It can be anything from anywhere. So if you were like, man, that one time in fucking Germany, there was this brunch. It can be anything from anywhere. Appetizer, entree, dessert. I'm, I'm gonna go with the meal I get every day on my birthday. Oh, my okay. Wife, my wife knows it. Yep. Um, my appetizer is Grilled wings. Okay, sure. The main menu, hamburger helper, beef stroganoff. Well, that's an interesting pick right there. That's and an interesting pick. I, I know, people are like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's your last meal. Hamburger okay. helper, beef stroganoff, and desserts, carrot cake. Carrot cake, I'm Easy with you day. on that one. Yeah, he is a Easy carrot day. cake yeah, fiend, I'm, I'm with so. you on that. I once drove a carrot cake um, <laughs> about a third of the way across the country um, it, but it was also in the summer. So when I would go into like fill up the gas tank, I didn't want it to melt. Um, so I would literally take it to the gas station with me, like a child. You wouldn't leave a child in the hot car. <laughs> I know, I know. Bro, he buckled it with a seatbelt and everything. I'm not shitting you, man. And you know this what? Guy, it made it and it survived to my house. It and I enjoyed the shit out of that cake. cake is. It, it is. But I know, I guess you guys have never had hamburger helper. Is oh, no. Last meal. Dude, we had a lot of hamburger helper growing up. I'm not as much a fan as you, but that's because, you know, I ate it a lot growing up. So. I got you. But also, Hey, again, sentimental to you, right? That is your yeah. thing on your birthday, and that's what you like, so that's what you're going to get on death row. Yeah. That is That was out of left field, too. So yeah, left awesome. field. Yeah. Okay, last question. Who's more likely to go to hell, me or Chris? I I just met you guys. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, my initial read is, I'm going to say you. <laughs> I'm seven for seven, dude. Are you? <laughs> He gets damned to hell every time. Damn. What is it about it? This is what I'm going to say. What, 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 Dude, what? You, you have a great personality. Like, I think you should be, like, hosting eh. a, a, a talk show or something like that. Um, you shoot very good. There's just, like, when something. people say they collect bottles of whiskey, there's just something about you where I'm like, right. man, he's an awesome dude for just meeting him. Something's off, though. He, he could have a dungeon in his basement. <laughs> I'm just sure. Just oh my god! Something along those sure. lines, bro. Maybe not to that extreme, but yeah. Just but you said it, it though. Yeah. But you, yeah. you said it though. Yeah. So yeah. on the flip side, why am I not going to hell? Please. Well, you got to define what what like puts you in hell or something. I'm just thinking. He's, he's got, got some demons. He's got some demons. I, I think. I, I, no, I think you are more partier than him. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, I, that's I see fair. that people like man when. I'm not. It doesn't have to be drinking and all that stuff. I'm just saying, man, that dude probably yeah, he has gets done down. some mischievous shit in his lifetime. Yeah. He gets down. Sure. He gets down. Sure. I think you're just, you know, you, you, he's wholesome. Uh, you're wholesome, bro. Thanks, you're man. Yeah. Who would you prefer to have next to you in a fight, though? This is our uh, 200 point transition drill. Pro timer goes off. You're going to fire 10 with your carbine. You reach bolt lock. That's at your bottom bullseye. Transition. 
10 with your pistol. It's scored as is, 10, 9, 8. No. The piece of paper is seven, off the piece of paper is five. Okay. The par time is the hard part about this drill. 10 seconds. Okay. 10, transition 10 in under 10 seconds for Damn. score. That's burning okay. it down. Yep, that's burning it down. Jake, you're up. Woo. Good. Good run. How many rounds total? Uh, that was 20. That was a 957. Oh. Let's see, he's under 10. So we'll go two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 188, which is a which is a great run for the first time. 190 is expert on this. Good run, bro. Hey, I'll take that. All right, 10 and 10 and under 10. Okay. Shooter ready? Yep. Messed that up, didn't I? Good, we got the part time, 942. One on paper. So Tracking. So close. Yep. Total time, 883. Nice run. All right, one, one, two, three. Tight race on this. It was. It that was, was a good. tight race. I like good that. Shooting, that was solid. Dude, good shooting. Good shooting for good you, drill. man. Your pistol shots were off the chain, man. Yeah. Look at that. That's a tight, that's a tight ass Fucking group. great pistol shots, dude. Hell yeah. All right, hey, fellas, we shot three drills right here. Man, the 19 Levitt Syndicate team can shoot three of my favorite drills. I got beaten around the world, my favorite drill. Um, and this is the first time these guys are shooting these drills. Um, and they crushed around the world, 3-2-3, three, three, and my 200-meter transition aggregate. You can look at the scores on all that, 188, 192, 197. Good shooting, fellas. Hey, likewise, yeah. brother. I enjoyed it. Solid Same. game. Great day. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Who would you prefer to have next to you in a fight, though? Damn it. Scrappy. That was a first. Scrappy, right? That was a first. Yeah. Yeah. You hurt my feelings yeah. on that one, Dan. Scrappy. Speed. Hey, dude, you you got to be honest. No, I know. Yeah. You got to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Be honest. Hey, I'll take that one. I'll yeah. take yeah. that one. That said, you did say you would whip my ass in 30 seconds max. Yeah, so, so poor choice on So that I'm still one. not great in a fight. <laughs> Just better somehow. Gotcha. Okay, with that depressing uh, news out of the way, we're taking you to gun number one. <laughs> All right, gun number one. Gun number one, of course, is a type A carbine. Um, what's special about it is, is, is really, I, if you pray, hey, give me the weapon system you think you're best at when prefer teaching with, it would be a carbine. Okay. Um, you know, even though in the military that's our primary, you got to be as good as your secondary. Though it was, it was equally training, and the the amount of instructors we sought when I was active duty was was probably more pistol than carbine. It, it, really? it really was, yeah. Probably yeah. more pistol guys than carbine coming in there. But at the end of the day, it's just been my favorite weapon system to shoot. And this one, again, I go back and I, I, I believe I got a carbine from Type A that's got over 50,000 rounds to it. And if you know how the barrels are 15? made. 15? 50. 50. The very wow. first carbine they Holy gave me. Shit. I'm actually sending it back to them because they're like, there's no way that barrel should have I was going to say, re-barrel that thing. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. But they want to, you know, like, there's no way we didn't think it would last that long. Yeah, do some research um, on that. But they did build me um, a carbine the way I wanted it. Um, as far as the rail, super thin. Um, they they want theirs to last, and there's nothing wrong with theirs. But, again, based on that conversation, the shot showed they put ask me anything I want on a carbine. It's very, very similar to those, but just a little nuances. Like, I don't like an ambi safety. Um, my, my triggers, their trigger is badass. It's a two-stage flat trigger, not light, not heavy. Um, but just in general, um, it's their carbine, type A's, but I've just always been a carbine fan. Why no uh, ambi safety? Um, I grew up that way. You know, uh, it, it's just one of those things. I'm not against evolving, but 
I grew up where, hey, well, you got to fight on your left hand side and we do reloads and all that. And I just prefer to sweep the, the safety with with my index finger yeah. or, or on, on my left hand yeah, side of my phone. Yeah. Huh. It's it just, I've tried ambi safeties and, and the, the ambi mag releases on my support side. And yeah. It's still messes not your thing. Up. I, th I think they're great. I mean, evolve with it. There's, you know, you can. You can hide them in there so you can't bump them and all that, but they, they don't have anything whiz bang on, on the LFT guns they make for me. It's just mm -hmm. straight. Even even the pistol grip is is A2? the A2 yeah, original. Yeah, the A2 grip. Yeah, I they, saw that earlier. There's like, nothing wrong with Bravo 5 grip. systems and all yeah. that. They have great grips. It's just, that's what I prefer, and that's how they build them for me. Yeah. Um, the, the, tell me if you have any opinion on this statement, because what, what you said kind of made me think, me and Chris have this conversation a lot, which is, hey, if you're taking a, you know, let's say you're taking a new shooter, right? And, and you're going to get them into shooting. It's like, hey, teach them kind of the, teach them the fundamentals, right? It's like, the, you know, no whiz bang, what, whatever. It's like, teach them the fundamentals. But we, we've always kind of had the conversation. Once you get to a certain threshold of competence, if you want to make some weird adjustments that work for you, even though you wouldn't necessarily teach that to a new shooter, but yeah. it's like you've reached a level of competence where you can start to make those kind of weird judgment calls. Hey, if it works for you, rock and roll. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you 100%. Um, there's nothing wrong with those um, doohickey bolt latches that go through in the Bad lover. Yeah, yep, bad yep. lover. Nothing wrong with that, except for when I see somebody who just bought that carbine and is trying to utilize that, and he's dropping more mags than he's right. doing good. Yeah, yeah. Is, is learn the control systems of the basic carbine, and then once you're good with that, add what you want on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be competent first on how the thing works. And mm -hmm. yes, and I always like, oh, hey, uh, you need to get with the times. Like everybody has an ambi safety. Every there's everybody has an ambi mag release on their carbines. I'm like, yeah, I understand that. But shooting a carbine, shooting a carbine. Learn, learn the fundamentals before mm -hmm. you add what you need to add on to that because it can breed, breed some bad habits for yeah. those things. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, hey, good gun. I've mean, got multiple yeah. multiple rifles for them, so um, nothing but good things to say there. Well, hey, you survived this. Not that bad, right? It's badass, dude. You guys are easy to talk to. Oh, it's, likewise. Like, it's like I do these things with Trigicon and everybody's like prim and proper. Like they have pro photo prompters for me. I'm like, dude, just shoot them out, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I Just shoot them out, man. There yeah, doesn't, yeah. there can be mistakes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that, what's this cool, man? That's why I like filming with yeah. you guys. Ah, well, we we, we yeah, want it to be like, you know, some guys that watch the channel comment, like, I feel like I'm there just hanging out on the range, shooting the shit yeah, with, with yeah. the boys. And that's exactly how we want it. So thank you for uh, taking time away from the family, from the farm, coming out, shooting with us, having a good time, so. No, we, I appreciate it, fellas. Really yeah, man. Enjoy yeah, it. don't take anything personally. Nah. Just because just <laughs> <just 'cause laughs> I chose him to, to fight with me over you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I choose both of you guys, fucking really. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're All good. Right. We'll take you to some final thoughts now. Yep. Jake, heaven forbid you're ever in a situation that you have to defend yourself. Yeah. Now, if you are, one, you're definitely gonna have a weapon to defend yourself. The second thing you should have, or your fist, or I guess any legally justified means of protection. This box right here. Box, I thought you are pointing to your shoe, but it would cover that also. And the it I'm talking about is firearms legal protection, which is self-defense concealed carry insurance for your average guy. Yep. Right? They have a couple different packages. The bachelor package, so it only just covers Jake and his bachelor lifestyle that he lives. I am married, so my package covers my wife. It also covers if I'm traveling in a state for work that I'm legally allowed to carry in, I'm covered there. Some of the features that firearms legal protection provides are? Uh, unlimited attorney fees, uh, the attorney hotline, AKA, hey, I just got into some shit and I need to talk to someone. Customer service reps, not really who I need in this moment. I need more of a legal advice sort of scenario. Um, so there's that bunch of other stuff. Um, you guys can go check that out. If your weapon's confiscated, they'll cover you know some of the cost of replacing the weapon, all, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, check it out. Good company. They support us. You guys support them. Rock yep. and roll. Our code 1911 will save you about a third off each package. So check them out, guys.